Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I go from this picture on the left that I took with my phone to this picture that I'm going to post to Instagram. And this picture is um, part of my May lettering challenge. It is to answer which book I just read. And I just read the book You by Caroline Kepnes. So I'm making a post about that. So I wanted nice and red because it's kind of a kind of a weird creepy book. So I want it really red. I have it in black right here and I have all this stuff around because my desk is a mess guys. So I did this quick little picture and this quick little lettering. It literally took me like five seconds to do this. I wasn't even thinking. I just just kind of wrote it out really quickly and snapped a picture. So I'm going to show you how I go from this crappy little picture to this nice little crisp post on Instagram. So let's get started and I'm going to be using Photoshop for this. So grab your Photoshop and grab your picture and follow along. I have my picture right here in my Dropbox. That's how I get it from my phone to my computer. I just upload it to my Dropbox account and then it pops up right here. It says the last file I uploaded was that one. So I just kind of go to the folder and grab it and then straight from there I drag it into my Photoshop. So what you want to do first is rotate your file because you can see it's sideways. So what I'm going to do is go to image, image rotation, and then you choose one of these, either 180, clockwise, counterclockwise, or arbitrary, and you can put in your own um, degree of rotation in there. But usually it's just one of these. So I'm going to do counterclockwise, and it's going to turn left. So there we go. Uh, next, what you want to do and what I usually do, you can leave this till the end. I usually do it first is I crop my image. So I'm going to this crop tool right here in the tools bar. Or you can press the letter C on your keyboard and it's going to take you straight to there too. So I'm just going to click this and I already have this selected right here, but you guys can choose your ratio up here it would say ratio so you would click on this little arrow and choose square if you're doing a post to instagram um, you can choose any other ratio you can just kind of um, clear this and then you can do a free shape whatever you want um, for your size but i know i want a square so i'm going to go choose my square then i will just kind of adjust my image so click on the image and drag it around and position it inside that square however you want it. And I know that this brush is in here, but I'm going to be erasing it completely. I don't want it in there, even though I thought I was going to want it. So I took a picture with it, but I don't. I decided not to use it. So I'm going to get rid of it and I'm going to just crop it out. So what you do um, is just kind of position your art in the middle of the square. And you can see a grid right here. Um, that helps you position this in the center so you can kind of see that my O is going to be more in the center. So that, that's the center of the word. So I know to position the O in the center. Um, and I think this is pretty good. Maybe I'll make it a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller. So the U is going to be filling up more of that square. So that's about it. I'm just going to click enter or you can click this little check mark right here and it's going to crop it out for you. All right, there we go. That's all done. I'm just going to make this view a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to grab my brush right now. So go to the brush tool right here in the tools or press B on the keyboard. So I'm going to press B. I'm going to hover over here. When you hover, you can see the size of your brush. It's a pretty small circle. Um, you can right click on your mouse and you will get this menu or you can go up here and get the same menu right up here. So you can choose the size of your brush. You can choose how fuzzy it is. This is the hardness. So the, if it's 100%, the edges are going to be very nice, hard and crisp. Um, if you go all the way down, they're going to be very fuzzy and kind of um, smooth. I guess fuzzy would be the word. So I'm just going to make it a little bit harder because it doesn't really matter. Um, the size is perfect. Make sure your color is white right here. You can click on it and make sure it's white and then click. Okay. And then I'm just going to paint over this area 
and then this area and then this brush right here and its shadow so I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to my letter without erasing my letter and that's about it this little piece right here and I'm gonna erase just kind of around just to get the dark edges because there's there's some shadows happening right there it was pretty dark in the room when I took this picture but we'll fix that so just erase as much as you can if you know you're gonna have your background completely white you can erase as much as you can around there but don't go into little details erasing in between the the letters because we're gonna fix all that so go to image adjustments and curves or command M or control M if you're on a PC on your keyboard so we're just gonna click on curves and this is where the fun begins so you know that this piece of paper right here was actually really white in real life but in the picture it looks very gray and dark so we want it white again so we're gonna click this image right here this little icon this is your white point if you hover over it it will tell you sample an image to set white white point so click on this and then go back to your image and click on any area of your image that you want to be really really white now we know that this is already really white but this isn't and we want these two to match so click somewhere in here and there we go and if you see any little areas where there's little shadows just keep clicking on those till you get them really white and that's about it it just fixed it um, fixed it all right now so click on this black point right now and set your black point unless you want to leave it the way it is but if your letters um, especially if you're using black if they kind of seem washed out the black doesn't look black anymore it looks kind of gray then grab your black point and click on a part of your letter that you know is going to be super black like the darkest part of your letter so I know this is going to be my blackest black in the image so I'm going to click right here it made that area black black and then everything else got a little bit darker and a little bit more rich so this is pretty much it I'm going to click OK and get out of that menu and now you see that it's black there you can see when you zoom in a little bit and you can see there's some pencil marks right here that I want to get rid of so I'm gonna grab my white brush again so I'm gonna click this little icon right here it's gonna make these two colors white and black and then I'm gonna click this arrow right next to them to flip them over or the letter X on your keyboard will flip them again so I'm gonna make sure the white is on top and then I'm going to click B on my keyboard again. I'm going to make my brush smaller. And then I'm going to go in here and erase some of these pencil marks. And I don't have to be completely accurate. This image is only going on Instagram. This is not going anywhere else. Um, it's not being printed out or reproduced or anything like that so this is only for Instagram purposes but I still want it to look decent right okay I think that's pretty much it now I'm gonna show you how to make these letters red so once you clean them up pretty good and you're done go to image adjustments and hue and saturation and here you can change the color there's other ways of choosing colors um, there's a billion ways of choosing colors and changing colors in Photoshop but this is like the fastest easiest way um, and usually this way I kind of adjust my colors if I do a picture of um, of a watercolor lettering that already has color in it if I just want to change the color a little bit I usually just do it in here because it's faster so I want to bump up my lightness a little bit I'm gonna click colorize first so bump up my lightness um, so that the color fills the dark areas then I'm gonna bump up my saturation oh and look I want it red if you want a different color just use this slider right here but I actually want my letters to be red so I'm gonna bump up the saturation even more and then you can play around with the lightness and the saturation and see how you like it maybe you want it pink 
then you will bump it up a lot. If you want it kind of reversed, you would do it this way. But um, I just want my letters to be red. And I think this is about it. So I'm going to leave it at this and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to save it. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. I don't know what legacy means, but click on Save for Web. If you're on an older version of Photoshop, I think you would just see um, the Save for Web somewhere under Save As. I think that's where it used to be. It used to be Save, Save As, and then Save for Web. I think they combined it now with Export, so it's now under the Export. Um, so go in here, and the only thing I do in here, usually I just leave my JPEG somewhere between 60 and 70, or you can just click on medium. That's pretty much enough. And then I change my pixels to about a thousand by thousand square, thousand pixels by a thousand pixels square, because I do post these from my Instagram to my Pinterest. So I don't want my pictures to be too tiny because on Pinterest you want them nice and big when people click on them. So I'm just going to do this. This looks pretty good. So I'm just going to click save. And then it's going to ask me to name it. So I'm just going to name it you. I'm going to save it to Dropbox and I'm going to go to my Instagram folder. That's where I save all my Instagram pictures. And I'm just going to hit save. And that's it, guys. So you can get rid of this one now. You can um, you can not save it and you can just close it out and you're going to have the one that you just save as a JPEG. But if you want to save this one as well, you would just go to save as and then save as a Photoshop file. But you probably don't need this since this is only going to be an Instagram image. I'm not going to do anything else fancy with it. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to um, close it out and not save that one. So here it is. This is the image that we just worked on and it is in my Dropbox. And what I would do next is go to my phone, open up Dropbox on my phone and then save this picture from my Dropbox to my phone. So I would save it to the camera roll on, on an iPhone and then I would just post it to Instagram and that's about it. Bye. If you're interested in learning how to digitize your hand lettering in Photoshop, Go to twoeasels.com forward slash courses and the digitizing in Photoshop lettering course is coming this June 2017. It is on pre-sale right now so you can get a nice early bird price and early access to any videos that I will be posting earlier than the release date. So go to twoeasels.com forward slash courses and look for the Photoshop course. I'll see you there. Bye bye.